Hello one and all, this is how to make a Gary's Mod server. I am your host Chris, and we're going to get right into this. The first step we're going to do is the port forwarding, which all servers need to, collect, to connect onto the internet. To do that, we want to go to our command prompt and find our local IPv4 address. So just type in command on your rum bar. Sometimes for Windows it's CMD, depending on what uh, operating software you're using. If you're using Windows 8 or 10, just try and find the run box. And remember, CMD is for the command prompt, or just type in command prompt fully, and it should come up. Anyways, once you're here, Allow me to make this a little bit bigger before we go on. All right, now, once we're here, you can see that we have this blinking line. That is where we're going to type in IP config, just like that. And then we will hit enter. You'll notice this side of the screen will be blocked out just to cover up my own IP address information just for privacy sake. So, do not let that bother you. That will not that won't be blocked on your end just for this video to protect my privacy. Now as you can see here, IPv4 address, just follow the dotted line, write the number down that is there. Then you want to look at default gateway down here. There should be a number then that has Letters and numbers, you want the number that is under it, that is just numbers only, that looks pretty much similar to your IPv4 address. So once you have both of these written down, make sure to not get them confused, and make sure you write the IPv4 address as your local. That'll be helpful to make sure that you don't get them confused even more. Now once you have those, you can exit out of here. Now once we have the information written down from our command prompts, we just want to go to our web browser. We want to type into the web browser the default gateway that we got. Once that's typed in and you hit enter, you should come to a page much like this. It is your router or modem control panel, which we need to edit our port forwarding and create ports forwarded for our server. I'll just increase the size of this tab. Now we will want to log into here. Once here, you'll notice that there is different tabs for editing different parts of the modem router. This is all for different things, but you just want to be looking for an advanced setting that says port forwarding somewhere. Like for mine, I already have an advanced tab here, but for other routers or modems, this could look different. But just look for an advanced setting and look for something that says port forwarding. It's usually never different. It's either forwarding or port forwarding. For me, it just says forwarding. Now, once we are on the port forwarding screen, we want to create a new port forward for our new server. As I've already made one, I already have what I needed forwarded, so I will just show what they are. As you can see here, these are both the ports that need to be forwarded, 270.115 and 270.05. Those are two different ports, so you want to go through the process of creating the 270.115 port, and then you want to go through and create another port that is 270.05. These are both the ports that Gmod uses. As you can see, I had another server that also used it, which was an unturned server. But for a Gmod, you need both 27.0.15 and 27.0.0.5. I'll just demonstrate how that looks creating it. Now here, for our example, you can see that we have local IP address. This is where we want that IPv4 address to be. So the one that you wrote writ down from the command prompts, just type in here. Then for the local start port, again, the first port that you want to forward, or second, it doesn't really matter which one you do first, but one of them is 27005. That goes for the local end, local start, external start, external end. You want the protocol to be both, 
you can name it whatever you want. I just have a Gmod so I know which one it is for. And then you want to enable it. Now, as I said, depending on what brand of router or modem you have, this is going to look different. But the information that you need to input is pretty much the same. So just make sure all of this information is correct. You can hit apply and you're done with that setup. Just remember, again, you need 27005. But once you're done with that, you need to go and create a new one that is also for 27015. Just keep that in mind. You need both of those ports, not just one. Now we'll move on to the next part, which is actually creating the server. Now to start creating our server, we need to get the Steam command prompt first. You can find it on this website. I'll include a link in the description for it. You will scroll down to the Windows section, assuming that you're using Windows. Download the CMD for Windows. Link's right here. It'll ask you to download a zip file. Download that, save it. I recommend saving it to the desktop. Now, once that's done, extract the file. I recommend extracting it to a folder. And then open up the folder for it. You will see this program. These files won't be here right away. You need to run the program first for the files to show up. So once that's ran, you'll see all these files pop up. Then you need to log in as anonymous. You do not need to, but it is recommended you log in as anonymous just because it's easier. For some reason, when you log in as your normal user, for some reason it seems weird about the password part locks you on that and doesn't move on, doesn't let you type it in. But yeah, so login is anonymous, like so. It'll give you a public license and whatnot. Now once that's done, I'm going to delete this folder. This is a test folder. You want a new test folder though. We need to type in force install dir and you need that to be exactly what it says there and then type in what you want your server folder to be and as you saw I just deleted one it's not there right now down here I'm going to type in YouTube again if you do not specify the root directory for the save file it will just go into this folder here I'm going to hit enter going to create the new folder. As you can see, it just popped up here. Now we want to app update 4020, just like that. Make sure there is not an underscore between the update and 4020. Then hit enter there. It's going to go through the process of validating, downloading it. This is going to take a while, so I will skip through this part. I'll show the end of the download. But yeah, this usually takes a bit, depending on your internet connection. It can take like, it can take like up to 30 minutes, depending, or possibly even an hour. It downloads like two gigs for this, because it has to technically reinstall the game or the server information. But yeah, I'm going to just skip this part. So, be back. Now, once this download is complete, you can run a validate test from this app update 4020 minus validate. That just makes sure that all the files are correct. You don't have to run that though. Pretty much once this whole thing is downloading up, downloading up, uh, you can just exit out of it now. Now the next thing we need is to go into the YouTube file here, or whatever you name yours, and here would be our server. Technically we can go online with our server already. If you just want to run sandbox with the basic maps, you can do that. All you'd have to do is click here, brings up this information, just type in what you want for it, and uh, it's good to go. 
but we're going to do some of the more uh refined <laughs> settings so go into gary's mod folder right here as you can see we have different settings for game modes maps etc add-ons but we want to worry about this folder here cfg we're going to go into that if you do not have the set to notepad already, just uh, right click on it, properties. You should be able to set it to open with notepad. Yeah, there it is. You just hit change on it and then hit notepad from there. So for the auto EX EC, we want to just type in here plus game mode and for this video I'll just use prop hunt as an example so I'll type in that that just makes sure that it starts the server is going to start in prop hunt every time now for server cfg file make sure not to get that confused with the other server file they have here Not there right now, but yeah, we want server CFG, and for this, we're going to type in this information here. I'll include this information also in the description. For this, this is the password for admins on your server. You need one of these to run the server though, so I'll just use one, two, three for this example. This is the server password. If you don't set if you do not set this, then it's just a public server. If you do set it, it's a private server. I'll just make it a private server for this example. So again I'll use the password one two three and for the host name, this is just your server's name. I'm just going to name it YouTube test server. Save that. Now we have both of those set up. So now, as you can see for game modes, we don't have prop, mon prop hunt in here. So for that, you would need to go to wherever you can find prop hunt. That would just be like Google searching it. Uh, you need the root files though. You cannot just use workshop files. So I already have those downloaded. I'm just going to extract them here. And as you can see, I'm assuming most of their ones will have files like these. You only need the game mode file though. So I'm just going to copy the contents over and throw them into my YouTube server game folder here. And now that's in there. Now that we have that set up, we can go into the SRCDS here. We can change the properties. Uh, actually, that's not what I want to do. I want to create a shortcut. Now I want to go to the properties, getting one step ahead of myself there. And now for this, at the target, we're going to change the end here. Just space. We're going to add more to it. I have it listed out all right here. I'm just going to copy that. You can change the player size. Like for this, it's just going to make it 20. For this, that means it's not going to use a GUI. It's going to use a console, like a command prompt. For this host workshop collection, it's going to use a workshop collection by this number. This number means that it's going to use everything in a workshop collection that is said that has this ID. To show an example, this is what I'm using. It's a prop hunt collection, so it includes all these maps and different props and whatnot. The ID is just the end of the web address, so 177117131. As you can see, that's the same. So you can just copy that whole thing, like I was showing. I'll include this in the description as well, and you just paste it in there. 
I have a different map set, just so it's not the default ones, to show that you can use different ones. Once all of that is set up, you can just apply those settings, and now the server is ready to run. So from here, just click on it, it'll load up the server. If you do not have the things added into your downloads for the add-ons and whatnot, it's going to download all of the add-ons into your add-on folder. As you can see, it's downloading everything for it. I'll skip through this if it takes too long. Now my server has officially started up. As you can see, the name now says YouTube Test Server there. It says the stats for it, running at 66.7 FPS, 0 out of 20 players on. The map that I put it on is default. If you have a map cycle set up, it will run through the map cycles as you do matches and whatnot. You can set that in your CFG map cycle .txt file. You can find that by going to Gary's mod here, going to your CFG folder, and then map cycle here. As long as you can use it, you can put those in there. It'll use default map cycles if you do not have anything set up, though. Though you can also change the map yourself in the server if you want to do that. <clears throat> but now I will show the server actually running online. So I will load up the game. Once you have Gary's mod loaded up, you can go into your find multiplayer game. Make sure that it's set to the right game type. I already did a test run just to make sure that it was already working. <laughs> but uh, I would suggest going to internet. You can just uh, do quickly show. When you're in here, you just want to make sure that you're selecting the game type that you are on and have your server on. So if it was on sandbox, you go sandbox for, for mine. Just go to prop hunt. I would type in my server name. As you saw, I would just type in YouTube for it, since that's what I set it as. And it has my server name all there still. Type in your password. We just had it set to 123, so you would do 123. And then we'd join the server. It'll load you in. It says I'm connected over here on the server console. It will download any of the workshop contents you need if it doesn't have it. You'll be inside the prop hunt then. You can load it up. It'll say everyone loses for me right now since I'm the only one in here. But yeah, you can see moving around in it, the map is working. If you do not have the right things downloaded, you might get big errors. This map pack is using the default contents of Gary's mod though, so everything is actually there. All right. But yeah, make sure all your files are correct. Uh, for loading in different mods, you want to make sure that for some of them, you download them physically and not just through Workshop. But if you are going through Workshop, make sure you have the right Workshop codes. And again, if you want to make sure it's cycling through the maps, make sure you're typing in the correct map name, as this is picky with the map names. So like for this one, it's GM downward pass with garden you would want to make sure that's typed in exactly on your map cycle file but yeah that is how to make a gary's mod server for basic things you can make a vanilla server that's just in sandbox easy with the gui interface but for more advanced settings i would suggest using command console like this it just makes some steps a little easier and yeah, this has been How to Make a Gary's Mod Server. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.